So when the awning is closed, one thing I'm looking for is this, this bar lined up with this set of rivets. Every year I say we need an accountant, and every year Brad makes me do our own taxes. I have a light up, like a sign you'd put on your house. I have a light up, one of those that goes up on my front rock guard up there. And really this is a shout out to this company to fix this potential error before we go any farther. So I've got this little demonstration panel here to show you what uh, different rivets look like. And we'll put this on. And that's that. You can see some of that corrosion. And then if you can, you'll see over here on this other one, it's a little bit worse, but right here around that one. Stay tuned in this video, there's gonna be a giveaway. All right, I'm up on the roof again. Um, my awning was coming in just a little crooked and I'll show you when I get back down what I was looking at. But there's a screw up here. There's two actually, one on the rear and one on the front of the awning. And it's about a foot from the end of the rail. It's a little Phillips head screw. Pull that screw out and then your awning. So when you pull this screw out, this awning will slide in this track back and forth. And I run my awning out about a foot and a half or so. And then I can, when these screws are out, you can slide this within this track. So I slide it until it's lined back up and then put the screws back in there. So let's go down and I'll show you what I did. So when the awning is closed, one thing I'm looking for is this, this bar lined up with this set of rivets. So if you stand back and you look at it from a distance, is it leaning that way or leaning that way compared to the rivets up top? So when you get the thing loose and it's out about that far, you can push, push the awning arm and push up there against that and slide it one way or the other and get it back on track to line up with these set of rivets. So that's where you should be lined up with at the bottom. Because if you see this thing is centered or almost centered on that set of rivets, so your awning arm should be about the same up top. So if you look at that awning right there, you'll see it's almost perfectly lined up with that seam. It's just a little, it's about a one inch towards the front of the trailer. And here's the front side. Again, that's about an inch too far forward. Next time I'm up on the roof, I'll pull those screws out again and, and uh, move it back another inch. But it's much better than it was. It kept drifting forward somehow. Uh, there's always adjustments to be made. Blair is intently working over there with two screens. Hard at work. Every year I say we need an accountant. And every year Brad makes me do our own taxes. <laughs> but you're so good at it. You do taxes, I sweep the floor. <laughs> yeah, <get your> <laughs> a month or two ago, I don't know how long it's been now, I put on some little red numbers, three inch tall numbers on the back glass of my rig. And then when I posted a photo, I got a, a, a host of comments back about, you know, that's not how Wally would have done it. Well, my shirt says, what would Wally do? He'd put his number on his trailer because that's what he did. And that's okay if that's your, if that's your desire, put your number on your trailer on the aluminum part. I don't do that. Mostly because I take a lot of photos of my trailer and those photos are used for a myriad of subjects and a myriad of websites and other things like that. So I like when I take my photo, they can be used for other things other than having my number up there. And I don't like putting the number on the paint because maybe this is our forever trailer, but maybe it's not. So I want to be able to remove that should we desire to get something different. And I've carried my now number, 11330, from our old Airstream into this Airstream. And if we ever get another one, I'll take it with me there. And that number is really not significant to anything except for 13, 13 adventures. I couldn't get 13. I couldn't get 1133. I couldn't get any other thing like that. I even tried to get the atomic number of aluminum, uh, but couldn't get that number either. So we'll, we'll keep using the number that we have. Displaying the number, whether you want to display it on the, the oval windows here, your door window, the back window, the top of the rig, the your tag, I have a light up, like a sign you'd put on your house. I have a light up, one of those that goes up on my front rock guard up there. I'll show you photos of that at day and night. I have my big plastic plexiglass that I can hang on the front window when it's open and I can hang it on my back hatch when the back hatch is open. So depending on the rally we are attending or you know wherever we might be parked that I want to display that number, I have a number of options to hang it up. One thing that I never really considered until it happened to us was at a at one rally, there was an elderly couple who had uh, had to call 911 and you know the, the emergency vehicle showed up 
and they were able to identify this trailer by their number because when there's a hundred of the shiny things in the in the park you can't just say come to the shiny one uh, so find a way to identify yourself when you're particularly at a rally at an airstream rally if you're in normal parks you're kind of a standout typically but it's, it's always nice to have the big red number particularly in that kind of situation. Display your number how you want to. Make it your own as you should, your entire trailer. You should decorate your trailer the way you want to. You should shine it up the way you want to. You should accessorize it the way you want to and make it fit your lifestyle. Yes, it's my lucky day. Uh, this is really not the time of year to talk about this, but this happened when we were still in freezing cold temperatures. So I wanted to chat about it real quick. And really, this is a shout out to this company to fix this potential error before we go any farther. Uh, Blair and I were camping and it was cold weather. I think it was like down to 19 degrees that night that we happened to be uh, in where we were in South Carolina. But very cold. And this was over the course of a couple of days. It was very cold at night. And as you, if you've watched this for a while, you know that we heat sometimes with propane, we heat with our heat pumps, and we heat with our uh, Dyson fan in our bedroom. So depending on the weather and where we are kind of thing, uh, and then if we're hooked into shore power or not, we will heat in different facets. But my point is, this particular night, it was cold enough for us to have to turn on the propane furnace and heat the rig up to keep the tanks from freezing. And at some point during the night, and I don't know when, because I woke up at like 4.30 that morning, and I noticed my bathroom light was lit up with the screen. So I'm just going to turn the screen on. But the screen comes on, and at night, it's, it's pretty bright in this room. And because I sleep on that side, I can see the window here when the door shut, and I see it lit up. It's very common in the wintertime when you're camping that the screen lights up and comes on because there's a thing called freeze detection, and the screen will say FD. And you'll see the little spinny wheel at the bottom, the fan motor's blowing. At 38 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature sensor outside will note that the temperature there is 38 degrees. And it will turn the flame on and turn the circulator on to heat everything back up until it gets to about, I think, 48 degrees. And at 48 degrees, it shuts off. And this will do this many times throughout the night when you're camping in cold weather. And that keeps that water flu flowing in there so it doesn't freeze. Well, on this particular night, I had an error. And I don't know what the error was. It was error number five, which could be fan blower motor. And there's a myriad of other things that may come with that. But it doesn't matter the error, any error, error one through nine. If any of those errors happen, the, the screen will lit, light up and say E whatever, E one, two, three, four, five, all the way to nine. And it will stay that way until the error is cleared or the machine outside is cut off and turned back on. Well, this particular night, error five happened. I have no idea what caused it. But I don't know. I also don't know what time it happened. So let's just venture to say it was one in the morning. So from one in the morning until I got up at four thirty, the there was nothing happening for freeze detection out there, and the water in the pipes outside froze because I turned this to hot and turned it on, and nothing came out. So I know that water has frozen in the lines and the pipes out there are frozen. So my biggest concern is. This thing was lit up and the whole bedroom was lit up or the whole bathroom was lit up and I noticed that and again that's not odd I'm used to the freeze detection light coming on and it stays on for 10 to 15 seconds and shuts off but this stayed on and I noticed it was on and on and on and on so I got up and come here and checked and it was an error. What I want them to install is an audible alarm. If there's an error of any sort in freezing temperatures you should know about it like if if we happen to be in that in the house and it's during the daytime and this thing had an error i still wouldn't know about it because i can't see the light there should be some type of audible alarm on this system anytime an error happens to notify you that hey something's wrong with the system you may want to check it out but that's most important in the freezing temperatures because if the freeze detection is not able to heat up the water it's going to freeze the pipes and then when you know what happens to freezing water when it or water when it freezes it expands and if you ever busted one of those pipes out there you have to replace the whole thing and that's not something i would be excited about doing so pay particular attention if you're ever camping in freezing temperatures that uh if if any errors happen if you run out of gas or there's no spark or any any anything happens uh keep keep a lookout in here and make sure you have no errors particularly in freezing temperatures so gerard please add something to this for an audible alarm gerard lippert oh I reached out to the company to ask about uh, this issue. I sent them an email and 
I have not received anything back yet. So in the future, should I receive anything back about their efforts or their thoughts or their plans or anything else like that, I will let you all know. But so far, I've got nothing back. What's up with all this sand in here, Blair? What? We must have a dog. Holy crap. <laughs> we, we're not... We, we haven't even been to the beach. No, that's just going to pee and poop. Going to pee and poop for that one. Yep, that one. Hey everyone, good morning. We just returned from a trip and I noticed upon cleaning my rig that I'm missing something. And it's a pretty hot topic right now. And I addressed this in a video a couple weeks back about front end separation and things like that. And that I have had no issues thus far. And I think we've got, let me go look. How many miles on the truck or on the trailer? All right. So I've got 7,500 miles on the trailer so far. This is the first sign of any, any issues I've had up here. Well, I'm, it's not really the first sign. It's, it's, the, it's a sign. And I don't know that it's front end separation. It's just things happen. Like uh, I finally had a rivet pop inside. That's the first time that's happened on this trailer. We had it quite a bit on our old trailer, but this happened up here. The other sign that I've had is opening this front locker. I've noticed that it's, it's sometimes it's very tight up here at the top. Uh, so I've had that issue as well once, once it's closed because it's pretty, it's a small gap up here, wide gap over here, things like that. But uh, the rivets, I have a rivet kit here uh, from Air Gear that I ordered long long time ago when i got the trailer and it came with three separate drill bits and all the rivet sizes for what you need underneath and uh interior rivets and things like that but it did not come with buck rivets or it did not come with olympic rivets so if you don't know every rivet on the outside of the trailer is a buck rivet meaning someone is on the outside and someone's on the inside and there's two things push that rivet and make it tight and give it an airtight setting which is uh fantastic. But in order to do that, you got to have access to the inside of the panel. Now, if you recall back when we first got this trailer on that corner panel over there, I had to replace that entire corner panel because it had a tear in it from the rock guard uh, during transit from the factory to the dealership. And we replaced that whole panel, but I already had everything removed inside and I removed the inside skin. So it was a pretty easy job to do a standard buck rivet replacement. But otherwise we use a Olympic rivet. And I'm okay with Olympic rivets. I have no issues with them. So I've got this little demonstration panel here to show you what uh, different rivets look like. So here is a buck rivet from the factory and you can see the back side of those, what they look like after they're uh, done. These are all Olympic rivets. You can see the one with the washer on the back. And this one has a washer on the back. This is not shaved down yet. This one has a washer on the back and is shaved down. And you can see what a little bit of a gap. So I can get my thumbnail under there and under here. If anybody's doing Olympic rivets, I always recommend they remove the washer and use a silicone, uh, a little goop of silicone and put it in the hole. And then when you're done with it, you don't have that little gap. So you can see from here to this one. So this one has a washer on it. This one has a washer removed. How much smoother that is. This is my little rivet demonstration panel. If you ever do an Olympic rivet, there's some tools required. So standard rivet kit works fine. Then you have to snip off the end of this thing, but the shaver that you need to shave this head down is not cheap. I don't have one and I, I won't do the head. I'll just clip it off. I'm just putting a new rivet in here so there's not one missing next time we travel. Um, but I don't have a shaver and that shaver just it's an attachment that goes on a normal drill and it fits on the end right here. And that shaver is like 350 bucks just for that device. And if I were working on Airstreams all the time, meaning replacing panels and doing all that stuff, it might be worth the investment for one rivet. That's not worth the investment to me. Now I ordered these rivets from uh, airports incorporated. The reason I did that, I get a lot of stuff on Amazon like most of us do in the world, but I don't know that the quality of rivets that Amazon is selling me is the quality of rivets I'm going to get from these guys. They do aluminum stuff for airplanes, airstreams, all the things. So this is a, it's a I know this is the quality rivet I'm looking for. Uh, so that's why I ordered this. But all I'm going to do today is install this. I'm going to drill out the old buck rivet, install this one, and then I'll clip it off as close as I can. 
the next time I'm driving past a Airstream dealership and I have a chance to pull in there with a trailer, I'll do so and I'll go ask one of the technicians if I can uh, get them to come do it or let, borrow their uh, shaver, head shaver for a second. And I will we'll fix this rivet here. So I have a drill bit that's a short drill bit that I'm not going to drill through anything here. So I'm going to drill out this old buck rivet and I'm going to install this one. I'm going to need to get a little bit bigger bit to make that hole just a little bit bigger. Right. Now I have my rivet. I put my rivet in right there. I got my rivet gun. Now, if you're not familiar, there's different heads for different size rivets that you need. So like my interior rivet takes this one, my, this one takes this one. So there's a different head for different size rivets. And we'll put this on. And that's that. Simple as that. So it broke off right at the edge. The only thing I just can't do is shave it, but it's uh, not that big a deal. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, fill form cor corrosion. Uh, Ronnie Dennis, thank you very much from Airstream Nuts and Bolts. On his Instagram, he made a, a video on how to do fill form corrosion. So I'm going to correct that. But Ronnie, thank you always for putting out awesome information. Before we get going here on what, what I'm going to do to slow it down or stop it where it's at is give you a little explanation. Fill a form is not terrible. Uh, typically, you can see here you have an aluminum skin and then you have a clear coat on top of said aluminum skin then you put a rivet or a screw or anything punching through the clear coat sometimes will cause a break in the clear coat allowing uh, water molecules and oxygen molecules to come down here and cause a chemical reaction so between your aluminum molecules and the all the other molecules coming here you get what's called aluminum it's actually trihydroxate uh, will build up into this white powdery stuff underneath the clear coat causing a little bubbling. It's really all it is so it's not that big a deal. Uh, if you do get it it's not going to cause a huge thing but big topics to take away here are it's cosmetic only. Unlike corrosion on steel in the form of rust it's not deteriorating the metal. This does not cause the aluminum to deteriorate at all and it's typically short-lived so um, you might see it going out to 10 millimeters past the point of entry, uh, but not it's not that far typically. So I wouldn't be super concerned with it if you do have it. Just stop where it's at, and it, it shouldn't go beyond that. But if you live in a salty environment, make sure you get that washed off as often as possible. So there's a number of different products you can use. I have this Corrosion X. Filiform corrosion on an airstream is, as Ronnie Dennis says, it's like cancer. The scars of it will always be there. You can't undo those and you can't take those away, but you can, you can stop it. And the way to do that is you have to scratch it up a little bit and then you have to put some of this, this uh, material here on it. And you can use, I got this, I have had this kind in my truck for a while, but there's another, another kind you can use and I'll put both models on the screen here of what, uh, what's recommended. But really all you need is some, some type of pick or sharp device here. So let's first look, I have some right here on this, this rivet right here. So you can see some of that corrosion. And then if you can, you'll see over here on this other one, it's a little bit worse, but right here around that one, a little bit worse. So I'm going to work on both of these. What you have to do is really you have to scratch the clear coat up some. And you see some of that clear coat peeling off there. But my goal is to stop it. Again, it's something that will always be there once it's started. And depending on the environment you're in, it's worse. So once I have those kind of scratched up a little bit, I'll squirt some of this corrosion stuff on here. And let it sit for a little while. One of those things. Now I'll come back out here and check this in a couple weeks and see if this is uh, continued or it has stopped the corrosion. And this is the number one place I found it on the doors. 
So I have it on this door and a couple other doors, a, a rivet or two, not that big a deal. All right, so two of the things that are uh, problematic to most folks is the filiform corrosion and, you know, particularly if you have this front locker here. And uh, since Mark and Trish put out their video, front end separation. I don't have any buckling in this area. I don't have any uh, de deformity of the, the, the trailer here. So, and I'm, this, this trailer has the new, there's a brace in here uh, that was installed at the factory and they fixed that a couple years back. So I'm not really overly concerned with it. Uh, and then the hitch issue, I get asked about the hitch all the time. I call them the, the hitch police, but I don't have a hitch. I have the BMW hitch on the truck there and I don't use any weight distribution hitch. Uh, I do have, like I've said many times in, in many videos, I have the torque lift central stabilizers, uh, side load stabilizers, I think they're called. And I put those in year, a couple years back. And since I've had those installed, I have not used any type of uh, weight distribution hitch or sway control. The trailer handles fine. I don't have any issues. I'm not worried about the the load on the back of this truck because it can handle a, a significant load. So I don't have to worry about the bars. And that's not to say that I don't believe in them. I absolutely believe in the, the various types of hitches out there and weight distribution hitches and the air safe hitch and all those things like that. I just think uh, depending on the tow vehicle and the weight of your trailer, it's more necessary or not. So uh, that's for you to decide on your own. And um, I think you should do your research. So that's my belief and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's, I'm gonna go look around the other, uh, I know I have some of that filiform corrosion on this other panel over here, so I'm gonna go check that out. Also check your wheels and check the rear tail lights and things like that. Uh, many people do not wash their rig often. I wash mine quite a bit. But if you're not washing your rig often and you're not getting um, particularly if you're in a salty, very humid environment, if you're not getting some of that humidity off or the salt, particularly the salt, if you're in salty air near the ocean, uh, you should be washing your trailer and your car pretty, pretty regularly to get some of that salt air off because if not, it will form corrosion. Hey everyone, before you start asking a bunch of questions about it, I'm going to answer it because I know everybody wants to know, based on the filiform, how does that affect ceramic coating? And do I believe in the ceramic coating? Yes, I believe in the ceramic coating. Uh, Vinny's out in Sacramento. Those guys are amazing. Uh, the, the sister store over here in Tallahassee, Florida, they're also amazing. I don't have the ceramic coating on this trailer. I do have the wax on ceramic coating that was you know, done at the dealership, uh, but I'm going and I'm scheduled to go in about three weeks up to Tallahassee and I'll drop the trailer off and they're going to do the ceramic coating on this one, the spray on ceramic coating. And hopefully I can video and show you all the things that they're gonna do about that. But right now, since we're talking about filiform, I'm gonna address what I believe uh, filiform and that kind of, how does that work together? Can it still, can you still have filiform if you have the ceramic coating? Uh, yes and no. Yes, you can still have it because if there's already a, a ding, a chink in the armor, if you will, if there's already a, a this was, you saw in my diagram where the uh, there's a hole in the, clear coat already, if there's already started some oxidation underneath that, then there's nothing, anything you spray over top of is gonna change. However, the ceramic coating will protect future dings in your clear coat, uh, should you have rocks hit it or should you have whatever else, uh, or you know, punch something in the side, it's not going to get through your clear coat as easy. But you can still have full form with that ceramic coating on there, it'll just be much harder. The other thing is, in your badging, like the, where I have the international logo on here, or your belt trim level, or your marker lights, or anything else that's on the exterior of the trailer, if they don't take all that stuff off and spray the ceramic coating underneath it and then put all that stuff back on, uh, those holes can still cause or still have uh, filiform come through them. So I, I'm excited to chat with those guys about correcting it that I already have. I'm also excited about, you know, what are the what have they seen from their ceramic coating sprayed over that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm anxious to see what their feedback is on that. So I will let you know as soon as I have any more idea on it, but it's going to be a number. It's going to be about a month before you get to see anything about it, but uh, I'll let you know as soon as I do. Okay. Let's talk about the giveaway. I did a 
video review of this CarPlay here. So it's a device you can plug it into the uh, USB port on your vehicle for Android or Apple CarPlay. This company sent this thing to me for free. I tested it out. I made a review about it. You can see the video on our YouTube channel and on Amazon, my review and my thoughts on it. But if it's something that's interesting to you and you'd like to win it, all you have to do is go to the, our website, 13adventures.com, click on the contact us link at the top, fill out your name, email address. Please make sure your email address is spelled correctly. And in the subject line or the box there, that giveaway. Uh, I will collect emails for 24 hours. So this video comes out on a Sunday morning at 8. So Monday morning at 8, I'll stop receiving those emails for that week's giveaway. And I will randomly select somebody and I will contact you back and get your mailing address and let everybody know who won. So uh, it's been fun giving some of these things away and I've got giveaways for the next few weeks. So make sure you continue to watch. As always, everybody, I, I'm so thankful for all of you out there who listen to what I have to say. And I'm so thankful for this community. It's such a wonderful group of humans running around here and um, love you all. Th thanks for bringing me to your home. Have a wonderful day. And as always, please reach out if you have any questions. Bye. Uh, but why I, I can't do this. These, these sand fleas are destroying my legs right now. So I will come back and do this later. Guess it's my love.